my name is vikram priyadarshi a student of civil engineering faculty of engineering and technology university of lucknow i am going to present a seminar on the topic analysis of gravity tail okay so starting from the very basic definition of gravity tail the gravity tail has been defined as a structure which is designed in such a way that its own weight resists the external forces this type of structure is most durable and solid and requires very less maintenance such dams are constructed of masonry or concrete generally the concrete dams are considered okay okay so gravity dam it is the most durable structure and it requires very less maintenance it can hold a large amount of water and the nowadays the gravity dam is preferred because it is relatively more strong and it is stable okay so the most ancient gravity dam on record was built in egypt more than 400 years bc and it was of uncemented masonry according to the archaeological expert to believe that this dam was kept in perfect condition for about 45 centuries okay. now coming to the typical cross sections of gravity dam okay so this is just the overview of the gravity dam equal cross sections we can see uh, the gravity dam has a left face the left face uh, is called upstream face and the upper portion is crest the right side of the portion is downstream force and the downward part is the base so the left face can be the left face here i have shown uh, in the figure uh, the left face it is full vertical it can be uh, part vertical part inclined or full inclined okay. so the water present at the left part of the reservoir we call it is a head water and so the downstream phase after the water is spilled out some water remains called as a tail water okay. down downward part is called as a tail water okay so uh, coming to the free board here we give three to five meter of free board since we need to store a large amount of water So heel and toe are the back and front downward point of the base. Okay, so now we can see here a uh, spill spillway spillways are there. Okay, so to uh, drain out the water outside is is mostly spillway are used. Sometimes the water is discharged through the spillway by opening the gate. Okay, so sometimes during the rain reservoir is full or in any condition. Okay, whenever we need. Whenever it is necessary to drain out the water, it will be used. Okay, so there is a term called gallery. Okay, so what is gallery? Gallery basically the function of gallery. Sometimes there is a steepness. Sometimes there is steepness on the side of the dam and the uh, foundation of the dam. So the drainage gallery is for the steepness water and drains out. Okay, so there is a pipe connected from the drainage gallery to the foundation. So water seeped from the foundation is collected and drained out to another pipe to the to to the tail side of water. So basically, basically the main function, the main function of is to drain out the water either from side or from the foundation. Okay. So this was some typical cross section of the uh, gravity dam. This was the overview of the gravity dam. Coming to the next slide. Okay. So the forces acting on the gravity dam. Okay. So here we can see. Yeah, the seven forces which acts uh, in, uh, in the gravity. Okay, the first is self weight of them, hydrostatic force on them, uplift force on them, earthquake forces on them, tilt pressure force on them, wind and wave pressure force on them, ice pressure force on them. Okay, so from all these seven forces, all these seven forces, it is clear that there are six forces. Which is acting on the dam, and only one force which resists these forces, and that is we can see self weight of them, and all the forces are on them. Okay, so this is this is basically the beauty of gravity. Okay. Now, uh, self weight of them, self weight of them. Here we consider concrete as a material. Okay, in self weight, concrete as a material, we consider. Okay. Concrete as a material, it is made up of concrete. That doesn't mean there is no any steel reinforcing. We give steel reinforcing, but at the corners, at the side, and and it actually does not affect affect the density of concrete. Okay. 
Okay, so generally unit length of them is considered. The cross section of them may be divided into several triangles, rectangles, and it can be calculated. Okay, so the total weight W of the dam x plus kg of each section average weight equal to uh, volume per unit length into density of the material. Okay, so the next force is hydrostatic force on them. So the pressure distribution of hydrostatic force on the dam by water is uh, is a linear distribution. Is there. linear distribution if P P is the hydrostatic uh, force of dam and gamma P equal to hydrostatic force of the dam is equal to gamma h square by two. Uh, we can see gamma is specific weight of uh, water and h is the depth of the water. But here here is particularly in this in this condition diagram P is the uh, hydrostatic force of them up up stream side. Okay. So the next force is uplift force of the dam. Uplift force of the dam. Pressure intensity basically uh, we can see that here drainage gallery is used. Okay. So pressure intensity is more where the head difference is more. Okay. So the head difference is uh, the left part of the uh, dam is uh, head difference is more. So down gamma W capital H pressure intensity is more. But uh, we can see if drainage gallery is present, it can be analyzed in two ways. Drainage gallery is present, drainage gallery does not present. Okay, so if drainage gallery is present, then the pressure intensity is reduced below the drainage gallery. Okay, so it's reduced below the drainage gallery. Okay, so uplift force can be reduced by here providing drainage gallery force is drains out the uh, water which which actually slips through uh, foundation or sides. Okay, uh, that is the one reason provide drainage gallery. Okay. Uplift force reduces, and the second is uh, providing grout curtains. Grout curtains is a type of structure which actually increases the slippage or the flow of water. Okay, at a suitable depth from the base of the uh, from the base of the dam, we, we provide grout grouts uh, at the toe uh, at the toe side and at the heel side. Okay. So coming to the uh, next force, that is earthquake forces on the dam. Okay, so earthquake is basically the vibration produced by the earth in any possible direction. Okay, so in analysis, in analysis, we need to find out the worst possible direction and for that the dam is in time. Okay, so uh, the earthquake forces can be of it can be of four types on them in horizontal direction, on them in vertical direction, on water in horizontal direction, and on water in vertical direction. On water in vertical direction is not considered that is negligible. Effect. Okay, so the on then in horizontal direction, the, the, the worst possible condition is head water is present and tail water is not present, and earth moves towards the upstream or reservoir. The second is on them in vertical direction, if we see uh, earth moves downward and there is a no contact with water. Okay, so the third one is hydrodynamic pressure on water in horizontal direction. Okay, so hydrodynamic. Horizontal acceleration acting towards the reservoir, towards the reservoir causes a momentary increase in the water pressure. Okay, this is this is a momentary momentary pressure. That's why it's a dynamic pressure. Okay, so and this force this force is basically P E hydrodynamic pressure force equal to zero point five 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 into K H into gamma W H square. Okay, where K H is you know, uh, the coefficient uh, of gravity. Okay, this is the coefficient of uh, gravity. Seismic coefficient, seismic coefficient in horizontal direction. Okay, Sorry. Uh, coming to the silt pressure force on them, silt pressure force on them. So, the phenomena of deposition of silt is a continuous process. The silt which deposited at base or sides of the dam is considered and it is basically act as the Active earth pressure. Okay, so now if yes is the height of the silt deposited, silt deposited, so silt deposited. So actually, so force due to the pressure of the silt is given by half uh, submerged unit, uh, submerged unit weight of the silt into height square into one minus sine phi upon one plus sine phi. Actually, this is uh, the uh, Rankine's active earth pressure coefficient. That is k value and phi is the angle of report. Okay? Coming to the next wind and wave pressure force. Okay, so waves are generated due to winds blowing on the surface and finally terminating on dam body. This generate extra force on the dam body causes the wave pressure force. Okay, 
So the bay pressure force depends upon the height of the bay, which in itself depends upon the wind velocity and fetch of the reservoir. Okay? So fetch is a term which is generally used in the reservoir. Okay? Ice pressure force. Ice pressure force in cold countries, the ice formed in the reservoir. This ice may be expanded or melt due to temperature variation. Okay. So due to the melting and expanding of ice exerting pressure on the gravity dam, this force acts linearly along the length of the dam and at the reservoir level. This basically does not occur in India because uh, uh, this much ice pressure, uh, ice is not found in this in, in ice is not found in India, Indian region. Now, stability analysis of gravity dam. The stability analysis can be done in the four ways. That is, overturning about the top, sliding at the base, compression or crushing at the base, tension at the base. Okay. So, discussing one by one. First is overturning about the top. Okay. So, we studied previous all the seven forces. Okay. All the seven forces and on calculating uh, calculating their moments, we notice we notice that there are some forces which tries to overturn about the toe and some forces, some moments which resist the overturn about the toe, okay? So for stability, for stability of the dam body, summation of all the moments, resisting moments should be greater than or equal to the summation of all the uh, overturning moments, okay? So when the resultant force pass through the toe of them at that situation, then overturn. The ratio of anti-clockwise moment about the toe to clockwise moment about the toe is called as factor of safety against overturning. Okay. So the next is uh, sliding at the base. Sliding at the base. In this condition, all the horizontal and the vertical forces are considered, and uh, for no sliding, for no sliding uh, of the base, our uh, new summation of all the vertical forces should be greater than or equal to the summation of all the horizontal forces or for the sliding net horizontal forces greater than new times summation of vertical forces. Okay. And sliding or shear failure of a dam will occur when the net horizontal force at base of dam exceed the frictional resistance of base of dam. Okay. So sometimes sometime the shear key is provided at the base to increase the shear resistance, generally the towel bar and groups are provided to increase the shear resistance. And in that condition, the factor of safety uh, changes. Okay, so the next is compression or crushing at the base. Okay, so this this type of stability analysis is done basically in the two type of cases. Two type of cases. First is a reservoir full condition, and the second reservoir full condition means where the head water is present at its full scale and it pushes pushes its maximum and the second is uh, a reservoir empty condition the water present at the tail so we analyze the worst case so we analyze the worst case it is safe in if it is safe in the worst case scenario then it is safe in stable in any case okay so if the compressive stress exceed the allowable stress of concrete which cause failure of them against crushing okay generally allowable stress of concrete is taken as 300 kilometer per meter squared okay so in this case, pressure maximum pressure intensity. Okay, maximum pressure intensity in this case is taken as uh, summation of all the vertical forces upon width into one plus six e by b. So it is the summation of e is the eccentricity and b is the base of the uh, dam. Okay. So okay. yeah, the maximum maximum comes at the heel. And uh, the minimum comes and minimum comes at the top. Okay, so P minimum and likewise similarly the P minimum. Okay. So tension at the base, tension at the base due to loss in contact, effective base width decreases due to which less width will experience more crushing stress. Hence, tension cracks do not directly cause failure. However, however, the failure will be due to the crushing at the base. Okay, so. This was all about the analysis, analysis of the gravity dam. Okay, this was the all about of the gravity dam analysis. Now becomes the case study. Okay, so the case study of the Bhakra dam. Bhakra dam is a gravity dam. Okay, Bhakra dam is a gravity dam, and it is the highest. It is the highest gravity dam in Asia and second largest in the world. And uh, the first is uh, I 
in Grand Dixon Dam, which is situated in uh, uh, Switzerland, in Switzerland, okay, which which is 284 meter high. Okay. So, Bhakra Dam is 740 feet high concrete gravity dam across Sutlas River uh, near the border of Punjab and Himachal Pradesh in northern India. Okay. So, it is the highest gravity dam, as I told, in Asia and the second largest in the world. The construction of this project was started in the year 1948 and was completed in 1963. Okay. So, Bhakra Dam was constructed with an aim to provide irrigation to the people of northern region. Okay. So this is the some uh, slight feature of uh, Bhakra Dam. Total cost of the um, cost of the project uh, 245.28 crore. Uh, height above the deepest foundation 740 feet. Height above the river bed 550 feet. Length of at top 1700 feet. Width at top 30 feet. Okay. So maximum discharge through drum gate. Drum gate is uh, 7500 uh, meter cube per second. Uh, maximum normal water level uh, upstream of gate is 512.064 meter and design head for the peak discharge taken is 10.05 meter. Okay. So uses of Bhakra Dam, some of the uses of Bhakra Dam are, uh, some of the main uses of the uh, Bhakra Dam is hydropower generation, irrigation water, flood control and water for drinking and industrial use. Okay. So these are the references which I have referred for these in, uh, to make these slides with PPT. Okay, so thank you all. Thank you so much.